Hello everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R, Part 7, Lists. Now in the last lesson, we learned about our first multi-dimensional data structure, which was the matrix. But matrices in R can only hold one atomic data type. So to deal with the sorts of data that you're going to be encountering in the real world that has a mixture of different data types, we need to learn about other data structures. Lists are a data structure in R that can hold objects of different types. And to create a new list, you use the list function. So in this code cell, we're creating a new list called new list, and we are assigning it the value of this function call, which is a list of three elements. The first is a vector, the number is one, two, three, the second is just this character string, R is fun, and the last element is actually a two by two matrix. So you can store really any sort of object in a list. You can even store other lists or multi-dimensional data structures. So we'll run that and see the result. You can see the first element of the list is just that vector, the second element is that string, and the third element is actually a multi-dimensional structure. So you can have multi-dimensional things nested inside of lists. Now you can give the objects inside of a list names when you create it. And to do that, you simply write the name that you want to assign and then say equals um, whatever the data you're storing is. So in this case, we're, we're making the same list as before, but we're assigning specific names to each item this time. So we're calling the first entry vector, we're calling the second one character string, and the last one my matrix. Now you can see that each of the list elements has a specific name instead of just a number for the index. Now you can use the names function after creating a list to access the names of the objects. And you can also use the same function to assign new names. To do that, you just use the names function on the list, then you use the assignment operator, and then you pass in a vector of the new names you want to assign. So in this case, we're just renaming everything object one, object two, and object three. And then we'll print the new list, or the new names. So you can see we renamed these into these. Now you can index into the items in lists similar to how we indexed into vectors and matrices. So you can use the same vector indexing constructions we learned about. So this new list list here, you use the square brackets as the index into them and you just pass in the number associated with the item that you want to get. So in this case, we're taking new list and we're getting items one and two. In this one, we're getting a single item. So item two. And here we're checking the type of item number two. You can see when we select just item number two, we're actually returned a list containing that one item instead of the actual item itself. And when we made new list, we know that that second item is actually just a character string, it's not a list. So the fact that it returned a list and not a character string can be a functionality that might trip you up. To actually access the item inside of that second index, and not just take a slice that returns a new list with only one object. You need to use this indexing notation where you use two brackets instead of one. So here we're taking new list and we're saying we want to get the item at index position two and we want the actual data object instead of just a slice that returns a new list of length one. So if we use this double bracket notation and we check the type we should get the actual object that's a character string so there you go we have gotten what we wanted if you have assigned names to your list objects 
You can also access the items using those names instead of numerical index values. So here we are getting object three in new list by passing the name into the double bracket construction. You can also do the same thing with this dollar sign notation. So new list dollar sign and then the, the name of the object that we gave unquoted. So these two different constructions will do the same thing. They'll both get us object number three, which is a two by three matrix that we stored in there. And you can actually do complex indexing where you're indexing into multiple things all at the same time. So here we're actually taking the new list we're getting object three, but the object three itself we know is a matrix and matrices support indexing as well. So after we've indexed in and grabbed that, we can also do something like this and pass in a second index to get say a specific element within that matrix. So here we are getting the matrix out with this part. And then with this part, we're getting element at row two, column two within the matrix. So this should just return a single number. Um, it should be number four, right? Because that's row two, column two. So there it is. Now lists support a variety of functions that let you do different things. Um, in particular, the most useful ones are probably looking at the structure and summary of the list so you get a sense of what it contains. So we'll just show a few of those functions here. Um, the length function works on lists just like vectors. It will return the number of objects stored in the list. The str or structure function uh, gives you an overview of the different items the list contains. And the summary function gives a summary of the list contents. Um, it's kind of a, just a different view of the structure of the list. So let's run these and look at the output. You can see the list has length three. With the structure function, it also says it's a list of three, and then it shows characteristics about each object. So object one, it says is numeric. It gives some examples of the types of values it contains. Object two is a character, and it just shows the whole thing because there's actually only one object stored. Object three is another numeric, and it shows the size of it here. And the summary shows some different things that might also be useful. It shows the length of the objects contained. So the first one is a factor of length three. The second one is just a character, so it's length one. And the matrix has six elements, so it comes back as length six. And it shows the uh, type of data in each one. So numeric, character, and numeric. You can can add additional objects to lists after you've made them. And one way to do this is using the dollar notation that we saw earlier. So you can just take the list, put the dollar sign, and then the name of the new object you want to add. So here we're adding a new object called object four. And then you assign it whatever the additional object is. In this case, we're just assigning it a new character string called additional object. But if we run that, we can see that there is now a fourth object added on to the end of that list. Now, if you do not want to assign a name, you can add an object using numeric notation. So here we're adding a fifth object because so far we have four and we're adding a fifth one by assigning something to the fifth index position. And we're just assigning it a character string again, but this one has no name because we're just doing it by numeric indexing. So if we run that, we can see there is a new object stored, but it doesn't have a name assignment. And we learned about using the C or combine function for making vectors, but you can also use the C function to combine two lists. So here we are making a second list that just contains these two objects, a string that says combine me, and a string that says with new list. And then we're making a combined list that's both new list, which is our five object list here, and our second list, which has two objects. So when we run this, 
we should have a new combined list with seven total objects in it. As you can see, we did not give names to those last couple, so those are left blank. Now finally, to remove objects from a list, you just access the object you want to remove using indexing, and then you assign that object the value of null to remove it. So in this case, we're taking the combined list. If we want, want to remove item 7, why does it say item 8 here? That's a mistake. That. If we want to remove the seventh object, we just assign that the value of null. And similarly, you can use um, named indexing to do this. So in this line, we're assigning object 1 the value null. So this will remove item 7, and this will remove object 1. So when we check the list, it should have only five objects left, which will be the ones in the middle here. So you can see that object one and the last one was removed. So that is about all that we need to learn about lists for the moment. And we probably actually won't be directly using lists too much in this guide, but lists serve as a building block for the data structure known as the data frame, which under the hood is built on top of lists. And data frames are used extensively in R and data science in general. So it's good to learn about lists because they do provide a construction to make data frames. So in the next lesson, we will jump in and learn about data frames. See you then.